Hey, so in this video I'm going to give an introduction to the vintage toy synthesizer from both a user point of view and from a development point of view. Um, just as a brief overview of its specifications and main features, I'm going to use a completely separate video to go over the features and the controls in more detail. Uh, basically a walkthrough of how to create a sound or patch from scratch. So in case you haven't come across this project before, it's turning a wooden vintage acoustic toy piano into a standalone digital synthesizer and this is the final product or the final the final result of the project so it's a two voice polyphonic digital synth and it has true polyphony and by that I mean each voice has its own set of oscillators filter envelopes LFO and distortion unit so let's start from a, a user point of view so to trigger sounds you use this keyboard so it's got 18 keys but they're they're not there's no black keys they're just painted on so essentially it's just a line of buttons and for that reason I've allowed it to be configured to play many different musical scales through a panel control which I'll show in a bit so the keyboard is completely velocity sensitive so depending on how hard you press the keys it sends a different message which you can use to modulate parameters and it can also send a uh, MIDI polyphonic aftertouch, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, but this is only available through MIDI out and not in the internal synth engine. So here is the front panel. So this is where you can control the parameters of the synth engine. So you, there are five oscillators, each with their own dedicated wave shapes. So you've got sine, triangle, saw, square, a controllable pulse and each waveform has its own uh, course tune or note parameter as well as uh, independent mix parameters. Uh, next we have a state variable filter uh, so it's a very versatile filter and it's got individual low pass, high pass, band pass and notch mixes as well as the standard cutoff and resonance controls. Uh, next we have a an LFO, so it's quite a simple LFO, but it's, it's it's still very usable. So it's got four shapes: sine, triangle, sawtooth, and square, and it's got a rate control and a bipolar depth control. Uh, so if we go down to the modulation section, so there are three modulation destinations: uh, amplitude or gain, frequency cutoff and resonance and then there are two modulation sources so you've got the LFO which I just showed and you've also got the keyboard velocity and then up here we have a digital distortion amount which can be used to beef up the sound or create some really aggressive sounds uh, we go down here to the keyboard and voice section so this controls exactly what notes the keyboard uh, triggers so you've got scale which controls the musical scale of the keyboard octave and then transpose and then you've also got this switch which can um, change the synth between uh, polyphonic mode and monophonic mode and then finally probably the most unique parameter of the synth is this vintage amount control and that's basically there to replicate old or even broken analog synthesizers by adding, adding random pitch offsets and detuning the oscillators of each voice. So yeah, that's quite interesting. So that's the, um, that's the panel. So I'm just going to take you around to the back. So here we have the uh, back sockets for connecting the synths to various things. So here we have two standard 5-pin DIN MIDI in and out sockets for connecting to external MIDI gear. You've got a quarter inch stereo jack for audio out. And then you've got a DC in socket as well as an on off switch. Uh, so let's just go back to the MIDI. So it's got MIDI in and out so this allows two things. It allows you to trigger and control the internal sound engine of the synth via external MIDI software. So via another MIDI keyboard or a DAW. And it's got MIDI out which allows the uh, device to be used as a uh, standard MIDI controller. And I'm going to use a completely separate video to highlight how the device can be used as a MIDI controller. Um, 
And then one other thing I've developed externally, well, externally as in it's not actually part of the synth, but it's a uh, patch manager application for handling uh, patch management of the synth. So if you connect your, if you connect the synth via MIDI to a computer running this, you can then save and load sounds and patches using this. So that's about it from a user point of view. Uh, now I'm just going to quickly mention it from a development point of view. So it's uh, it's an open source project. All code, circuit diagrams, and design files can be found in the project's GitHub repository. Um, so the the majority of the enclosure that you can see here is is actually the the original toy piano enclosure. So the the key mech is the main thing to consider here. Uh, the, the only thing that uh, is brand new for the synth is it's got a new panel. So let's open this up like a grand piano and I can talk about the development in a bit more detail. So the main brain and the main process of the synth is the beagle bone black which is underneath the shield or the cape here. So this is where the sound engine is run from. So it's running a Linux operating system and there's two main applications I've developed which are running on this. There's the brain which handles all the um, messages from the panel and the keyboard and the MIDI and making sure they get sent in the right places. And this was developed using the C programming language and using just the standard C libraries. Uh, then there's the second application which is sound engine application and this was developed in C++ using the Audio DSP library Maximilian as well as RT Audio. Uh, audio Out, that's done through this EC technology USB audio adapter. Uh, that's about it for the Beagle Brain Black. Uh, now let's have a look at the panel. So uh, the panel contains 35 regular potentiometers and seven detented potentiometers as well as a toggle switch. So the the control scanning is done using an Arduino Pro Mini, which you can see there, and it uses three 16-channel multiplexes as well. And then the Arduino communicates with the Beagle Bone Black, Beagle Bone Black, the serial. And as I said, the panel was uh, completely new for this synth, and it's made out of uh, three millimeter acrylic and it was uh, produced using laser cutting and then all the labeling and the text uh, that was done via uh, laser engraving so that's the panel uh, then there's the keyboard so as i said this is the existing key mech of the vintage toy piano um, so the sensors that detect the key presses are uh, homemade pressure sensors made out of velostat uh, the keyboard sensor scanning is also done using an Arduino Pro Mini and that's done using uh, two 8-channel multiplexes which you can see there and there and again the Arduino or this Arduino communicates with the Beagle Brain Black via serial and MIDI in and out that's done via a standard circuit for um, MIDI in and out and that's also connected to the Beagle Brain Black uh, via serial and then uh, the VST editor here uh, that was developed using the C++ library Juice so this is just running on Mac but Juice makes it very easy to make cross-platform applications um, so that's the code you can see in the background uh, so if you want more detail on the more details on the development of this uh, I recommend having a look at all the blog posts I've done during the during this project, which goes over the how, I, how and why I developed everything in more detail. So that's an overview, and uh, make sure you check out the next video where I'll go over exactly how you can use the synth. Thanks.